Welcome, Chet. Welcome. Welcome to part one of our vision launch. That's right, babe. It's part one because we're doing two parts mm -hmm. of launching our vision for 2022. Yep. And uh, we're really excited. We are. We're it's so be a excited. a great week. So part one today, what we're talking about is the heart of our vision. So uh, in a moment, I'm going to bring a message around um, the heart of our vision. Part two, we're going to sit down and we're going to talk about the practical elements of the vision, um, what we're going to be focusing on. There's kind of some key components that we're really excited to share with you, but that's part two. Today, just want to bring the heart, the why, um, and what we are looking at focusing on this year as a church. Now, babe, we have a thing called Vision Builders. Yes. And Vision Builders, um, look, we, we don't want that to be the context where we are setting vision. Vision Builders is about the expansion and the acceleration of our vision, but not the setting of our vision. So what we're wanting to do every year is set the vision at the beginning of the year, kind of around this time of year in February, January, where we set the vision um, and then we know, okay, we're ready to run. Mm -hmm. we've, we've made it plain. We know what God has for you, for us this year, and we're ready to go. So we're going to share the picture of the future. Jessen's going to share with us. Uh, we, we shared this at last year's Vision Builders. Um, Oakland was just born. Mm -hmm. yeah. how, how is Oakland? He's good. <laughs> he's growing. He is. He's on the move. He's amazing. I'm not asking because I don't know. I'm just, I'm just <laughs> saying Jessen and I, we have this son. His name is Oakland. He's seven and a half months climbing everything. Mm -hmm. Yes. Hungry all the time. <laughs> starving. <laughs> starving. Perpetually starving. Anyway, that's beside the point. Um, what we're going to share is the picture of the future. Um, and this is not like something we're thinking you need to remember as much as this is something we just want you to get the spirit of. This is the big picture we sense God is leading us toward. Okay, so are you ready, everybody? <laughs> I think you're ready. Where are you watching from? And babe, you're going to you go. lead us through this. Okay, ready? We see a large, healthy, growing church in the beautiful city of Sydney. A church that the people of Sydney love and that loves the people of Sydney. We see a multi-generational, multi-ethnic and multi-site church. We see a church that makes disciples of Jesus, a church where thousands of people are taking steps to know Jesus, find community and discover purpose. That's right. We see connect groups in every suburb across Sydney, groups where people are immersed in life-giving, Jesus-centred community. We see a multitude of leaders who are humble, pure-hearted and hungry to make a difference. We see weekend services alive with the Holy Spirit, youthful in heart, fresh with creativity, helpful to people and inclusive of the unchurched. We hear a fresh sound of worship that draws the heart of people to Jesus. Yeah. Worship that is like an observatory between heaven and earth. We see a church that is a beacon of hope with a visible people, with, with, oh. Visible With presence. Visible presence <laughs> and physical permanence right across Sydney. We see a team that is faith filled, spirit led, and yeah. known for unity, who values the one, is committed to personal growth, and always makes it better. Being on team is the best way to enjoy church. It is the best <laughs> way. We love it. We see a great return of sons yeah. and daughters. Yes. And a great harvest of new believers. We see a church that loves its local community and is loved by the local community. A church that is making a difference and leaving an imprint, on, of, imprint of Christ on Sydney. We see a church that seeks God with all its heart. We see a church that is focused, mobilised and on mission. Yeah. A church that hits the mark. We see a church that God trusts and is using to see Sydney a city for Christ. Amen. Come on, they all said amen. Amen. That's the picture. Thanks, babe. So beautiful. And we're so excited about this picture of the future. But right now, we're going we're gonna to get into the Word. We are. So I'm going to hand this over to Al, and he, he's going to go for it. Thank, thank you, <laughs> See madam. You soon. Love you. See you soon. Uh, and, uh, hey, we, we really are um, so expectant for what God has for you, for us, for your family, uh, for your friends. Uh, and so we are really excited to be launching Vision for 2022, part one. Here we go. So um, as we look at what, what is the theme, what is the banner over 2022, we believe it is this, that in 2022, we would be a church in motion. When we see ahead for 2022, what do we see? We see a church 
in motion. And so uh, when we say church, we, we often would think of a building and buildings are awesome. But when we say church, we don't mean buildings. We don't mean services. We don't mean programs. When we say building, sorry, when we say church, we mean the ecclesia, the called out ones, the people of God, the bride of Christ, the church. We mean you. And so when we're talking about us, you and I, the church, the people of God, when we're saying a church in motion, it means people in motion. And what is the motion? Where are we going? What, what is our pursuit? What is it all about? It is all about Jesus. It is all about following Jesus, taking steps to know Jesus, find Christ-centered, life-giving community and discover the purpose of God's kingdom in your life. And so that's what it is. Our vision as a church for us together is that we would take steps to grow in Christ, to grow in Jesus, that of anything we celebrate this year, steps of following Christ would be the thing. And so we're going to look at the book of Colossians through out this uh, campaign, our vision campaign. So it's not just today. Uh, we, we're doing this over the month of February. And every week we're going to be letting you know about something exciting, uh, like, you know, some songs we've been writing, a gathering near the end of the year. Uh, we're going to talk about a little thing called college. We're going to let you know every, every week there'll be something we're letting you know about. But uh, we're going to be traveling through the book of Colossians. Now, Colossians is written by Paul, the apostle, and he's writing it from prison and he's, he's writing it to a young church. The Colossian church is a young church. And what I love about this is, is as a church, as C3 SYD, we aren't young. I mean, we're kind of young, 40 is not old, but as a church, we're, we're, we're not brand new. But what I love about these words is Paul is writing to a young church and I pray, let's be young in heart. If you've been following Jesus your whole life, let's stay young. What does that mean? It means to be open. It means to be receptive. It means to be a learner. Let's, let's learn afresh this year. Let's, let's find the awe and wonder of following Christ, the simplicity of the gospel. I believe this year, Jess and I and the team, we believe God has taken us back to what really matters. And that's what Paul is saying to the Colossian church. He's saying, guys, this is what really matters. Of anything that matters, this is what really matters. And so Paul says this in verse 28, Colossians 1. Turn there with me. He says, Him we proclaim. Him we proclaim. Come on, lean in, lean in. Him we proclaim. We want you to know, maybe you're watching this and you've, you've never been to a church. You've never even kind of... Um, heard about Jesus, we want you to know of anything the church is about, the church, we are not here to proclaim any other message other than Jesus. We are not, it's, church is not about money. Church is not about events. Church is not about buildings. The church is all about Jesus. Him we proclaim. His kingdom, His kingship is our proclamation. There is no other thing we're going we're gonna to speak about, celebrate more than Jesus. Listen, the most important person in C3SYD is Jesus. Our, our prayer is that the most important person in your life would be Jesus. He is the most important per person in the universe. But is he the most important person in our lives? And our prayer this year is that he would be our proclamation. He would be what we make public, what we celebrate, what we are most excited about. Him we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone with all wisdom. So we need challenge and we need instruction. Uh, good leadership, good shepherding comes with both. Jesus does this. His rod and his staff comforts me. We read David say in Psalm 23. 
So Jesus, he, he's a leader. He guides us. And so when we are proclaiming Jesus, we want to we wanna bring the challenge and the instruction. We want to bring the things that's going to help you, help us. I need this. I need, I need both with all wisdom that we may present everyone mature in Christ. This is the theme. A church in motion, everyone mature in Christ. What does it mean, a church in motion, to be growing in Jesus, to be maturing, to be ever pursuing and learning and growing and taking steps. This is a year for taking steps. Look, we are, we are praying and believing this year that our awe and wonder at the miracle of seeing lives transformed by Jesus would be rejuvenated, would be restored, and would be stronger than ever before in our church. This, this is the vision, that, that lives transform, people growing in Christ one step at a time. And here's the thing, it does happen one step at a time. It doesn't happen all at once. An overnight success is never an overnight success. You heard this in sport. Oh, wow. You mean they're an overnight success. Where did they come from? Boom. That soccer team, they're now amazing. Go Arsenal. Uh, they, they're, wow, look at them. An overnight success is never an overnight success. It happens by steps, step after step after step. And so that is what we want to commit our year to, what we believe God is calling us together to commit our lives to, to take steps, to know Jesus. And the thing about knowing Christ is when you know Christ, uh, Jesus had disciples. They were always together. So when you're following Jesus, it's never alone. It's always with community. And, and then as you follow Jesus and you're together with people, it's never just about you. It's about what God is calling us to accomplish. We have all we need in Jesus. And now we are equipped by him to go and make a difference in the world. And so we want to take steps in all these areas this year. I know in my life, I want to take steps in this. In fact, I was kind of asking God, well, hey, what's, what's a church in motion, my life? What's the step for me? And I think there's probably a few. But the first step, the next step for me, I felt and feel from God is to pray without ceasing. I want to grow my devotional life this year. Now, like I wake up in the morning and I've learned this from Pastor Phil to, to seek God early. And that's just something I do every day. Wake up early and go pray. And that's awesome. But I, I don't want to get stuck in this place where it's like, well, you know, uh, good morning, Jesus. And pray, talk to God. And then, okay, bye, Jesus. You know, see you tomorrow. We're instructed in 1 Thessalonians to pray without ceasing. To Proverbs 3 verse 5, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not on your own understanding in all your ways, in all your ways, in every meeting, in every conversation, and when, when parenting, when making dinner, when, uh, when whatever it is you do, pray without ceasing. Acknowledge Him in all your ways, acknowledging God in all your ways, and He will direct your paths. That's my step. I wonder, what's your step? What do you feel, God? Why don't you take a moment, and if you're part of our church or you're joining our church or you're wanting to know about our church, Let's take this year to ask God and say, hey, what's my next step? Not all the steps, what's the next one? So this is a year about steps. And here's the thing, when, when we focus on steps, we want steps to be our greatest priority, our biggest win, and how we measure success. Like it is so good that you don't have to wait to measure success. If you take a step, that is success. As a church, we don't want events. Events are good, but we don't want events to be our measure of success. Events should uh, strengthen our vision. They should encourage us in our vision, but they should never become the vision. Our vision is steps to be a church in motion following Jesus. Okay, so three things as I wrap this up. What, what do we need to prioritize to be a church in motion? What does it mean to be a church in motion? What does it look like? Three things. The first thing we believe is that we would be 
a church that prioritizes steps, not seats. A, a church that celebrates steps more than seats. Now, look, seats are important. Seats are great. And we're blessed to have connect groups, to have Sunday services where we can be seated. Sitting and reading the Word of God at home is, is an amazing thing. But you got to understand, hear me, you got to understand the seat is not the end goal. The end goal for your life is not to stay seated. The end goal for your life is to be in the seat so you can take a step. The end game for us is not just to get people in seats or to be in a seat ourselves. It is to be in the seat so we can take a step. And we are believing God this year that every seat will lead to a step. We're praying every Sunday service would be a catalyst to, from the Word of God, from an atmosphere where we are worshipping Jesus. It would be a catalyst that causes you to see the step that God is calling you to take and be able to take it by the power of the Holy Spirit. And so we, we are believing this this year. In fact, we're getting really, really purposeful about this, that every Sunday is kind of like the download. And so there'll be a message, there'll be an atmosphere that's a catalyst in your life. And then we have connect groups. And in connect group, this is where we're going to have discussion. So our connect group leaders, we're equipping them to be able to host great discussion about the messages and the book of the Bible we are traveling through. And so in Connect Group, you're going to be able to sit in a circle and talk, ask questions. And discussion is an amazing tool to help us identify steps and to take them together, that you're not doing it alone. If you're struggling with prayer, that's okay. Let's talk about it and let's help each other. Find ways, find things that's going to help us grow in the steps that God is calling us to. Then with every campaign, we're going to have a devotional. And the devotional will be a version Bible study, a version devotional. It'll be a Bible study of the book of the Bible that we are, the scriptures that we are traveling through each campaign so that you can dive deeper into the Word of God. And that might be a step for you this year to do the devotional with a campaign. Anyway, we're so excited about that because it's about the seat is about moving you to a step. Jesus said this in, in the book of John. He said, whoever hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man that built his house on the rock. Whoever hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man that built his house on sand. So the words of Jesus giving you a firm foundation to build your life on. The only way those words become firm in your life is when they move from hearing to doing, hearing to doing, from seated to taking a step. And so even if you are reading the Word of God, our prayer is that it leads you to a step for your life. How are you doing? You doing all right? Okay. Steps, not seats. Second thing, steps, not seats. Leaps, steps, not leaps. In other words, we need to prioritize the small steps, that, that it is not about stars. We are not looking for stars. We are not looking for people to go from zero to hero overnight. That is not the goal. And that is not God's goal for your life. It is that you would grow incrementally, that you would identify what's the next step in my marriage? What's the next step in leading, in my work, in my spiritual life, in my devotional life? What's the next step? So we want to be really good at together identifying what's the small next step. Now, uh, I don't know if you're a scientist. If you're a scientist, God bless you. Uh, but... Um, you know, in science, we, we know of Newton's law of motion. Uh, and essentially, um, anything that is not moving, unless acted upon by a greater force, will continue to not move. <laughs> I know. I know. Genius. Anything that is not in motion isn't going to suddenly get momentum. But something that is in motion... There's a catalyst and now it's moving. Once there is motion, there builds momentum. And you're going to find if, if we can just identify a small step, like sometimes we're like, okay, I'm going to read the Bible, the whole Bible this year. Well, why don't you just start with one verse per day? 
I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray three hours. Hey, why don't you just start with five minutes? Oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help all these people. Why don't you just start by helping one? Like maybe you want to start a connect group this year. Don't worry about reaching all these people. Just start with the one person God has put in front of you right now. Steps, not leaps. Steps, not seats. We're prioritizing steps. The seat is good, but it's about the step. Steps, not leaps. Small steps, not going from zero to hero overnight, but taking small steps this year. What's the next step? That's what we're going to identify. Next step is not a bunch of videos. Next step is not a class. Next step is about following Jesus by taking the next small step. Come on, in Jesus' name. Third thing is people over program. We need to prioritize people over program. In other words, we need to love people more than we love our program. The reason we have program, the reason we have services, the reason we do these things that we do is not for the sake of the thing that we do. The reason we have a service is to serve people. I mean, interestingly, it's called a service. Service. We want to be the kind of church that's not trying to just get people to do stuff for us, but it's what as a church, how is what we do helping people? How is it helping people take steps? And so as a church, we want to be the a church this year that is really intentional about loving people, about knowing people, about being aware of people, about designing anything we do to serve, help and strengthen people, to see people taking steps. So in 2022, a church in motion, what are we doing? Ultimately, we are redefining success in our own lives as a church. We are saying the sign that we are making a difference, that we are helping people become followers of Christ, helping people that are stuck in a dark place get free. The sign that we are making a difference is not events, but we're thankful for them. It's not just seats. We're thankful for them. The sign that we are making a difference for the kingdom of God and that we are building the church of Jesus Christ. The sign that God is using us in the city of Sydney is that people are taking steps. And if you can't tell, we're excited about it, that we're going to help as many people as we can take steps. And we're going to celebrate that as our biggest win, our greatest success and our number one priority. So this is, this is 2022. This is the heart. And like we said, part two, we're going to break down practical elements of the vision, but this is the heart for the year. And so what we want to do here is I want to close in prayer because Paul says in verse 29, he says, for this, I toil. For this, I toil, struggling with all the energy that he powerfully works within me. And so we want you to know, church, this is not a work of our flesh. This is not a work of our effort. This is not a work of us striving to make this happen. For this, I told we know why this year we're redefining what really matters. Like Paul said to the Colossians, this is what really matters. We're redefining it. Steps is what really matters. And we are not doing this in our own power, but we're doing this by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit working in us. He is our guide. He is the spirit of truth. He, he convicts and he helps and he comforts us. And so I'm going to pray over the vision. We, we want to commit this vision to the Lord, to God. So wherever you are watching this, why don't you pray with me right now? And let's bring this before God and let his power work in us unto the fruition of this vision. So Lord, we come before you right now. God, we, we thank you, Jesus, that you are giving us clear vision. Lord, you are helping us see what really matters this year. Lord, what really matters for us as a church. Lord, that we are helping people take steps steps into relationship with you, 
steps into community in the church, being established with others in following you and steps into the purpose, going into our everyday work environment, making a difference for your kingdom, seeing the call of God in our lives. Lord, you're, you're helping us take the steps we need to become all you've called us to be in this life. And so, Lord, we commit this to you. We thank you for the anointing. We come under the authority of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for the cross. Lord, we thank you for the blood of Jesus that washes us, cleanses us, makes us whole. Lord, we thank you for your body that was broken, that we might be made whole. And so, Lord, we come under the name of Jesus. Father, we do not approach you under any other name. We approach you in the name of Jesus. And we thank you that through the work of your son, we are clothed in righteousness. We are made right with God because of Jesus. So Lord, have your way this year. Help us, Lord, that our lives are not stuck, stagnant, nor on pause. Listen to me. Your life is not stuck, not stagnant, nor on pause because of the pandemic. Whether we have buildings, whether we have nothing, we will always be a church in motion because it's not about the things, it's about following Jesus. And so, Lord, we thank you, God. If we are feeling stuck, you help us find the step that brings motion and movement to our following of you. God, if, if there's areas, Lord, that are a bit blocked, Lord, if there's areas that are on pause, we thank you, Father, in our church this year. Lord, you, you revive and restore that love, our love, our love for Jesus and clarity on what steps to take in following you in Jesus' name. They all said, amen. Hey, we're so glad you could join us and uh, watch this vision part one. Make sure you watch part two so you get the full picture of what we see for this year. We love you, church, from Jesson and I, all the team, and we'll see you soon.